Welcome. It is Wednesday, 12, 13, 23. We are almost done with December. It's almost Christmas time. I'm pretty sure we got one more service coming up before we go into Christmas break. Um, I don't know what exactly the church has plans. I will be here if they have service and I will stay home if they don't. So um, anyway, I've got a good message for you today. It's kind of going off of our bonus scripture from last week. If anybody was here, um, we talked about Romans 12, 6, and that talked about spiritual gifts. So that's the whole message we're going to be talking in 1 Corinthians or 1 Corinthians 12 and all the way from 1 to 31. It's a really quick chapter, but it kind of gets into spiritual gifts and how they vary and what that looks like for us. So I wanted to discuss a little bit more about how we all have our own unique fingerprint in the world, right? Just like your eyes are unique to you, your fingerprint is unique to you, God has given you a unique spiritual gift. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, before we get into it, I want to have a prayer uh, to get started. Um, first, we'll pray for Pastor Gunter and his family. Um, he's been preaching more and more lately. Um, he hasn't been able to resume all of his duties as a senior pastor, but he has been preaching about one service a week, um, and he's been doing pretty good. It's great messages. So, well, how about that? It's nice to see you, sir. Um, so anyway, um, we're praying for Pastor Gunter and his family, uh, TBC Ministries and Valley Christian Academy to continue to thrive, BCA Athletic Department for their spiritual and physical health, and uh, we have a returning hero back uh, from an uh, injury that he sustained, and we've been praying for you pretty consistently. So we're happy to see that Bo is back on his feet. Um, BCA staff, spiritual and physical health. There's been some colds or flus or some yuck that's been going around campus lately. Um, a lot of people are getting sick with it, so we're praying that people can get over it as quickly as possible. And then youth group to continue to learn and grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Is there any uh, prayer requests today? Is there anything that we can pray for you guys specifically? Okay, um, so for me personally, I've got a lot of work to do to get ready before winter up in my house. So I'm hoping to just find those minutes that I need to get all my work done. So if you guys can pray for me, I appreciate it. Okay, let's get started with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to come together. God, we pray that you uh, work in this moment to shed light and uh, to our path to open our hearts and minds to your word, to guide and direct us as we try to commit our ways to you, Lord. And we will thank you for it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, before we get started, we have our Bible trivia. First question, what kind of bird brought food to Elijah during the drought? Was it A, a dove, B, an eagle, C, a raven, or D, a sparrow? Yeah? Um, D. D, a sparrow? Not this time. Yeah. Huh? Raven. It was a raven. Good job. All right. Ravens. So uh, for the, you can find that in 1 Kings 17, 6. All right. Next question. Who was the leader of the Israelites when they captured Jericho? Was it A, Joshua, B, Joseph, C, James, or D, John? Was it Gabby? Go ahead. Huh? B, Joseph? Mm-mm. Joshua. It was Joshua. Yeah. It was Joshua. Joshua 6 is where you can find that information. We'll just give him all the prizes. He's got it this week. Just leave your hand up. Yeah, just leave your hand up. <laughs> all right, here we go. Next one. When the disciples saw Jesus walking on water, what did they think he was? Was it A, Jesus himself? Was it B, just their imagination? C, a spirit? Or D, Leviathan? You think it was Caden? Uh, Noah? Okay, Noah? Um, See? A spirit? You got it. It was a spirit. You can find that in two different of the three Gospels. Uh, John, they mention it, but they don't get real specific about what they thought they saw. So, what is the name of the nephew Abraham split the land with? A, Cain, B, Abel, C, Isaac, or D, Lot? All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Zoe. I know. It's Lot. You think it was Lot? I think you're right. It was Lot. <laughs> You can find that in Genesis 13, 5 through 12, where they discuss it. That took a lot to explain. Ah <laughs> All right. Next question. Which tribe... <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Which tribe shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel? Is it A, Benjamin, B, Levites, C, Zebulun, or D, Naphtali? Who didn't go yet? You think it was Caden? Okay, let's go Caden. See Zebulun? Not this time. Go ahead. B, the Levites? It sure was. Good job. Good job. You can find that in Deuteronomy 18.1. All right. This week's message is entitled Spiritual Gifts based on 1 Corinthians 12. And we will be walking through all of this. So uh, I will try to read briefly, but I want to make sure that you guys get an idea. Last week, we talked about Romans 12, 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. So Romans 12 goes on to explain that um, there's many different kinds of gifts, ministry, teaching, exhorting, just being generous and giving, um, ruling, and mercy, mercy, being merciful. So 1 Corinthians 12 kind of gets more into it and, and how that breaks down. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that this week. And it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you be ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Now I'll tell you, like I've told you before, um, I got really con got my priorities wrong. And I used to think a lot about my sports car and my career, how much money I made, right? My 401k package and all these other kinds of nonsense things. These are examples of dumb idols. And when we say dumb idols, that means they can't do nothing for you. They've, they've got no power. They're just like these things of the earth. Now, God does tell you that when you commit your ways to him, you're going to get all these things added to you anyway. But when you make those your priority first, you're getting things backwards. Okay? So we continue. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So, you confess the Lord with your mouth, and amen. God is working in your life. Um, you confess the Lord with your mouth, and it is then impossible for you to sit here and curse Jesus. That's just not how it works. Well, we talked a couple of weeks ago about how you cannot serve two masters. Then you either serve Jesus or you serve mammon. So continuing, it says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. It's always God, but He's giving out different gifts depending on what He wanted you to be able to do in this life. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. That means each one of us is given a different gift, but it's to benefit every single one as a collection. And he talks more about that very soon. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. I actually heard about a testimony of a man who went overseas, and he was put up in a Christian missionary camp. And they he had, had no experience with being a missionary before. But he was placed in a situation where they said, okay, you're going to go over into these tents over here, and you're going to heal those lepers. And he said, I, what, exactly? You want me to do what now? And he's like, well, you're a man of faith, yeah? You believe in Jesus Christ? And they say, yes, of course. And they put him in a situation where he was actually to go and heal. And his testimony is that he saw incredible, amazing healing take place in this missionary camp, which I, I was impressed. There's no pictures. There's no film. It wasn't about making this guy rich. But it was a testimony of the healing power that can actually take place if it is the Lord's will. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. I had the great privilege of knowing a man who was capable of speaking and writing seven different languages. And I thought, boy, just one other language. If you just grew up 
in a home that spoke Spanish, but you also happen to incorporate in this land of ours and speak English, I thought that's already an amazing gift. This guy could speak so many languages all at the same time. I was like, wow, your brain must be on a different level. <laughs> but come to find out, we all have just different gifts. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Uh, nobody in here who's professing Jesus could ever claim that they're anything less than. And that's a good assurance that we can have out of this verse right here. And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? So it's nice to know that my gift wouldn't work from your life, and it was never meant to be that way anyways. Your gifts wouldn't work in my life. You know, it's that old saying, walk a mile in my shoe. <laughs> well, it's very plain and evident right here. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more the, those members of the body, which seem to be feeble, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schism in the body, there's no divisions, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Now I want to pause here and say that I think that a lot of times I see adults get this kind of mixed up, where they think that because their gift is being honored in a specific area of life, they think that other people are not doing their part. They're very self-aware that they are contributing in a certain way, and they're looking at other people in a glimpse of a way and not seeing the whole in how they contribute. I've had people judge me in the last few years because I don't do as much as some other person does. And it was kind of a hard pill to swallow at first. But then I got to working with God and I was praying to him and I said, well, God, please guide and direct me. Please help me to understand why it is that this person seems to look down on me so harsh when I'm trying as best I can. And he showed me that it's because he only sees about a crack of the door. He doesn't see my life wide open. And nobody in this life ever will. Nobody ever sees what's going on in your life except for God. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles. Have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, and do all interpret. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I you unto you a more excellent way, which is to say, unselfish love. So unselfish love is the greatest gift that you can possibly possess in this life. It's one that you should aspire towards. It's one that takes practice. But I believe that it is one that God will give to every single person who commits their ways to him. All right, that's it for the message today, guys. Bonus scripture for 12, 13, 23. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. 
So it's nice to know that you don't have to scramble or scrape to get by. All you have to do is trust God, obey his commandments, and that is the whole matter of the law. Thank you, guys. Jesus loves you. I hope you believe it. I'm going to pray us out real quick. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to have come together. God, we praise you and we thank you for your presence in our lives. God, please continue to work healing and miracles in every single person who is here, in all the families, in all the leadership. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.